In this problem, we're asked to model the fractions three-sixths, four-eighths, and five-tenths using fraction circles. We'll be using the online fraction circles, or online fraction pieces, from the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives. Here's a URL to the site, and here's a URL to the tool. Keep in mind, depending on what fraction pieces you're using, the colors may be different. Let's first model the fraction three-sixths. To do this, we need to begin by determining which piece is equal to one-sixth. To do this, we need to determine which size pieces it takes where six pieces make exactly one whole represented by the red circle. So looking at these dark green pieces, notice how one, two, three, four, five, six dark green pieces is equal to one whole unit, which means each dark green piece is equal to one-sixth. And because three-sixths is equal to three copies of one-sixth, to model the fraction three-sixths, we need three green pieces. So here's the model for three-sixths. Now we may notice that three-sixths has the same value as one-half. Now let's go ahead and model the fraction four-eighths. We begin by determining which piece is equal to one-eighth, by determining which size pieces it takes, where exactly eight pieces equals one whole. Looking at these brown pieces, notice how it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight brown pieces to make up one whole, which means each brown is equal to one eighth. So to model four eighths, we need four brown pieces. So here's the model for four eighths. Again, notice how four eighths has the same value as one half. Finally, to model the fraction five tenths, we need to determine which piece is equal to one tenth by determining which size pieces it takes where ten pieces make exactly one whole. Looking at these black pieces, notice how it takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten black pieces to make one whole, and therefore each black piece equals one-tenth. For the fraction five-tenths, we need five black fraction pieces. Well, we already have ten here, let's remove five. So one, two, three, four, five. This is the model for five-tenths, which again we can see has the same value as one-half. Now for our notes, let's go ahead and use these models to represent the fractions three-sixths, four-eighths, and five-tenths. The next question is, what do these fractions have in common? What we should have seen from the models is that all of the fractions represent the same amount or have the same value. Next, what can we say about the fractions three-sixths, four-eighths, five-tenths, and one-half? Well again, all these fractions represent the same value. By definition, this means all these fractions are equivalent fractions. If we go back to our notes, remember equivalent fractions are fractions with the same value. And we can see from these models, three-sixths, four-eighths, and five-tenths are all equal to one-half. So we'll say all the fractions are equivalent fractions. And then finally, which one of the fractions is in simplest form and why? Going back to our notes again, the simplest form of a fraction is the equivalent form of the fraction where the numerator and denominator are written as integers without any common factors other than one. In a concrete representation, a fraction is in simplest form when it uses the fewest number of pieces to represent its value. Looking at the model for the three fractions here, we already recognized each fraction has the same value as one half. If we go back to our fraction pieces, because it takes two of these pieces to represent one whole, we know this would be the model for one half, and because this uses the largest possible fraction pieces, or the fewest fraction pieces, one half is the simplest form of the fractions. Or more formally, notice one half is the only fraction where the numerator and denominator 
only have a common factor of one. All the other fractions have common factors between the numerator and denominator in addition to one. So we'll say one half is in the simplest form because one and two only share a common factor of one. And one half can be expressed using the fewest number of fraction pieces. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.